welcome all of our viewers now to Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin and Road America for round 14 of the PPG IndyCar World Series. More than 75,000 fans on hand all the way around. Largest sports crowd in Wisconsin history, and this should be a great race, Danny. Well, Bob, it's got to be. They're coming down with three races left. This is one of them for the championship. There's a lot at stake. Everybody's jumped up there. There's 10 people that can win this championship. Points are very important today. We can't see any mistakes like we saw at Mid-Ohio last week. I'm Bob Varsha, working with me, Danny Sullivan, down in the pits, Marty Reed and Jan Bikas. And now the moment. A 195-mile-an-hour start funneling down into a very quick right-hander at turn one. From overhead, look at the jammed parking lots. Crowds on the hillside. The field, 26 strong, has one more turn, and then they will make the traditional run to an uphill start. They will not be able to see the flag stand until they crest the hill. We will be up in the rev range, reaching close to 200 miles an hour before the action begins at turn one. Look at that crowd on hand here today at Elkhart Lake. Forget the crowd. Look at the crowd on the track. Look how they're bunched up. This is going to be a great, oh, what a great looking start there. Zanardi in red, Jill DeFerrin in yellow, and the crowd is on its feet as we get underway. DeFerrin with the early lead as he comes alongside of Zanardi. He's going to try around the outside. He went down around the outside. Did he come away with it? Not They're yet. They're still side by Ooh. side. Look at that. Oh. 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 Zanardi and DeFerrin touch. DeFerrin is headed for the gravel. Now, can he get out? Oh, the same thing that happened to him. At the start, I mean, he made the mistake at Mid-Ohio, but, oh. Gilles de Ferrin, what a tremendous twist of fate. A week ago at Mid-Ohio, he ran into the back of Mauricio Gujelmin and went straight off. And there is Jan Magnussen sitting in for Emerson Fittipaldi in the Hogan Penske car. And he's bumped that front wheel. See that left front on your screen? It's the suspension's all bent. Look at this. I tell you, Zanardi came over. The Ferrin had the spot. Zanardi pinched him over there. That, I'm afraid, was Zanardi's fault there. I was looking further back in the pack to see if we could see what happened to Magnuson, but I could not see it, and we have a full course yellow. The flags are waving from the flag stand, and there is Gilles DeFerrin. What could be going through his mind now? What he a disappointment for DeFerrin, who won earlier this year in Cleveland in the final season as a car owner for Jim Hall. This should be a quick yellow as both cars are off the racetrack. There is Jim Hall. It appears that his team's race is over before it began. Stay with us. The Texaco Haviland 200 from Road America is being brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Controls volatility and fights vaporization by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Firestone, America's tire since 1900. Welcome back to Road America. There's Gilles DeFerrin, fifth in points coming into the weekend. Jan Magnussen replacing Emerson Fittipaldi for the balance of the season. Both of them are out of the race on the very first lap, and that will be devastating to DeFerrin's chances of overhauling Jimmy Vassar for the championship. There you see DeFerrin's car just outside the gravel trap at turn three. Magnuson's car buried in the pea gravel. Let's get down to the pit lane and Marty Reed. Down here with a very disappointed Jim Hall. What did he say on the radio, Jim? Well, he was disappointed. Uh, I was watching the monitor, and uh, Alex just put him off the road, which is, uh, you know, not very, very well done on his part. In my estimation, Joe was pretty upset about it. Two races now before you call it quits. Uh, it, this is such a sad way to, to, to end it up. You still got two more shots. We still got two more shots. It's disappointing from the championship standpoint because we could have used some points, and Joe was uh, was quite competitive here, and we had a good chance to win the race. I. Uh, I guess that's racing, but, uh, yeah, I'm disappointed. Let's end this on a positive note. You have to be proud of your crew. We've been watching them all week, and, and ever since you made the announcement, I mean, this is not a team that's rolling over. Oh, no. These, these guys are, are good guys. We've got a good crew this year. They've, they've really come together, and they do a good job. We're, we're competitive at every race. We'll see you at the next race. Let's go to Jan Vegas. Okay, well, Marty, the big question down here in the Ganassi Racing Camp is, is there damage on Alex Zanardi's car? Obviously, there's been a lot of radio communications back and forth from Chip Ganassi to Alex Zanardi. Their big concern, you can clearly see the contact 
on the left rear corner of the car. That's what they're worried about. They think possibly the toe might be out of adjustment. They want him, Alex, to go out there for the next lap or so, really feel out the car. They might bring him here on pit road if he feels that it's damaged. So at the moment, they're not sure, nor is Alex. A lot of confusion down here at Ganassi Racing. Bob? All right, thank you, Jan. Christian Fittipaldi, the leader under a full course caution, the first time Fittipaldi has led since the Portland round earlier this summer. And for Gilles de Ferran, his fourth DNF of the year. You're on board with Michael Andretti watching the two front runners up ahead. Of course, he's right there in third spot. They get through here pretty clean. Look at that side by side. Boy, he was a little out of shape. Comes down here, and his teammates moving up on the inside. Boom, contact. He dives to the inside. Luckily, oh, look at that. That's what happened. Oh, he went off on the outside. Now, here's another incident. Watch the fourth car in line. Paul Tracy right nearest there. the camera with Mauricio Guzzi oh. down in turn five, and off he goes. He comes back on. I don't know if he made contact there. Here we go. The red and white one in there on the inside of your screen again. Looks like he caught that front wheel. And that looked like, was that Brian Herta? I think that was Brian Herta. He just caught it with his rear wheel, clipped that nose, popped it right off. There you see the crews working on Jan Magnuson's car. Meanwhile, let's get down to Marty, who was in the Penske pit. Well, until you guys just showed the replay, the team down here had no idea how the wing came off. Paul hadn't really described to him. He came in quickly. They made the change. He's back out. He's saying the car is handling fine, but obviously lost a lot of track space. Well, just like that, the front row is out of contention. Christian Fittipaldi and Michael Andretti run 1-2 under caution. We hope to get it cleaned up shortly and get back to action. We'll be back to Road America in just a moment. Welcome back live to Road America as you see the safety crews working on Jan Magnuson's Hogan Penske car being pulled out of the sand trap after a couple of incidents on the opening laps of this Texaco Haviland 200. Let's watch now as the cars enter the first corner, three wide in some cases, and it's on this run down to turn three that Gilles DeFerrin and Alex Zanardi made contact. There goes Zanardi off on the grass, straight ahead into the gravel goes DeFerrin, followed by Jan Magnuson, who made contact with someone else's car. You ride with Christian Fittipaldi. Oh, Michael gets very sideways. That's what gives Christian the run on him down through that corner. He took that opportunity, slid through here. He's got to be loving this. He went from fourth and oh, he got it sideways there. Did you see that car jump out? That usually means that the tires weren't up to temperature. Now let's get down to Marty Reed in the pit lane. Well, the Hogan team is uh, packing up here as uh, they are waiting for Jan Magnuson to come back. You can see Carl Hogan. He is watching the monitor trying to find out because Jan got out of the car and did not say anything, and he unhooked the radio. So they have no idea what put him out of this race. Jan? Might be able to give you a little bit of a clue. Remember that Hogan used to be down here with Team Rahal. Now he's gone to Penske. It turns out that between Penske and Rahal, there was contact with both cars. They believe that Paul Tracy may have made contact at the rear of Brian Herta's car. They're trying to assess if he has any damage. And they believe that there was contact between Bobby Rahal and Jan Magnuson in that particular incident. They don't have any more information other than, just like Alex Zanardi, they are trying to get their driver to feel the car to find out if there's any further damage. Well, thank you guys. It's been an expensive couple of laps here at Road America. This track now some 40 years old. Maybe it's getting a little too narrow for the heroes of IndyCar. We'll be back with more in just... From high over Road America, a look at Hurry Downs, down to the world-famous carousel. Happy 50th birthday to the Little League World Series. And we'll be covering it here on ESPN2. Our coverage begins with U.S. qualifying Monday, August 19th, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific. Where else but Williamsport, Pennsylvania, site of the Little League World Series here on the Deuce. Here at Road America, we await a restart. Let's get quickly to Marty Reed in the pit lane. Well, I've got both Jan Magnuson and team owner Carl Hogan. First, Jan, take us through what happened out there. Um, not so sure what happened ahead of me. I think uh, it was uh, Sanadi and DeFerrin that tangled. And I um, guess it was uh, DeFerrin who went off and threw a lot of... There's a big cloud of dust, which uh, I didn't want to go through, so I pulled out to get around the dust so I could see where I was going. And someone ran over my front wheel. Carl, you've got to still be thrilled with this young man. I mean, 10th on the grid, 
and uh, just seems like he's fitting in with the team if, as Emerson's replacement. Well, he was for, uh, first in practice this morning, and he's come along real well. He's been great to work with, and I think we've enjoyed a wonderful relationship so far, and uh, let's hope it continues because I think he's got great potential, and I know our team does, so we'll be there one of these days. Still two more races, guys. And I'm sure Emerson Fittipaldi was watching from Key Biscayne in Florida where he is recuperating. Your team is thinking about you, Emerson. But it appears that their race is over. Now the safety car pulls off. We anticipate a green flag, and we have it. Christian Fittipaldi and Michael Andretti lead the field down toward turn one. Running first and second, the Newman Haas team that leads all other teams with five wins here. Michael will challenge Christian into one. He tried off hard, but look, he's had to go to the inside of the track there to block Big Mo. Don't forget, that's three Fords, and it looked like Brian Herta slid through, and some more guys are off. Looks like Juan Fangio the second and Max Papis are off. That's turn one. Those are two Toyota-powered cars. Looks like Christian's pulling out. Big Mo is going by. Michael Andretti, he's challenging down there. This is into turn five. There's a dip in the racetrack right in the middle of the braking area. Whoa, and Robbie Gordon has to take to the dirt. You know what you can tell is going on here. They're battling for a championship. A lot of guys don't have points at stake, so they're going out for an all-out win or for a good result. Look at Christian. He's pulling away. So Christian Fittipaldi takes the lead from Mauricio Gujelmin, Michael Andretti, and Brian Herta. And the interesting thing is Jimmy Vassar's back there with Al Unser Jr. right behind him, and those are the two main guys in the championship at the moment. You notice they're staying out of trouble. And there's been plenty of it in the opening laps as they head down to the kink. High-speed back stretch. The corner is even tighter than it looks, and it is absolutely breathtaking from these onboard cameras. I'll tell you what, it takes you just about the entire time to get back to those corners, get your breath back after going through that corner flat out. That looks like Alex Zanardi moving back up through the field. He's right behind Greg Moore, who's in eighth place. I don't think his car seems to be handling that bad. Alenzer Jr. just ahead of them as they come up through Thunder Valley into turn 14. And up the hill and across the start-finish line. Unzer presently shown in seventh spot. And he started 12, so he's taking advantage of some of the mishaps that have been on the track. Let's get down to Jan Bikas in the pit lane. Yes, guys, talking about mishaps, of course, on that first lap, you and Alex Zanardi, great race side by side. That is until he got down to turn three. What do you think happened there? It looked like he got squeezed. Well, I, I, what I think happened is the reality of what happened. He just decided to put me off the road on the braking. There was no reason for him to do that. There was plenty of space for him to brake on the right-hand side without putting me off the road on the left. I mean, he knew that I was there because I've been there since the corner before. He should be disqualified for unsportsmanship behavior, I believe. Now, is there anything that you can take it up with the stewards? What can you do as a driver now uh, to try and implement that? Well, I can just hope the stewards see what really happened and, and, and penalize uh, Zanardi accordingly. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Well, I got to tell you, I know how he feels. That's a very frustrating, especially because he looked like a potential winner to this race. He was down there dicing, and I agree with him. I think that Alex just moved over. And uh, Gilles didn't have any place to go. Uh, I don't know if he did that purposely to put him off, but uh, he certainly squeezed him onto the grass, and that's uh, unfortunate. But uh, the really sad part is we saw he's...